Hello darlings, I hope you're all well. Yeah. So I'm in my sister's room because there's some drilling going on the front of the house, which is where my bedroom is. Oh. At least I match her teddy bear. Today I wanted to talk about the toxicity of TikTok. And I've done a video on Proana TikTok, but this one's gonna be about just mental illness in general. Not only it can be very triggering, but it romanticizes it, it makes it a trend. BPD is a trend now. I downloaded TikTok thinking it would just be like cringy dance trends like musically was but then I stumbled across some mental illness content your for you page suddenly turns into depression content proana content all because you maybe watched a couple of videos and scrolled through some hashtags I think the real problem with mental illness TikTok is that a lot of people are trying to be as triggering as they can and it's almost like a competition I 100% understand using humor to cope when I was in my darkest place I would definitely look at memes to cheer myself up and it can be like a comforting thing to relate to But it will always end up on your feed. You'll be scrolling through, you might find one that isn't triggering and it's funny. <laughs> You scroll to the next few and then it's someone body checking, providing viewers with tips. I understand the feeling and the urge to vent and to share your feelings, but here's the problem. This will worsen and aggravate the disorder. Even if you think, I found my people, your brain is getting fed this information without you even realising. It's like glamorizing it. The app doesn't care what our triggers are. Everyone's literally picking up Proana tips again and I feel like it's 2012 and we're back on Tumblr. TikTok is certainly not the first social media app to breed toxic and unhealthy communities and cultures regarding mental health. It's 2021, there's still accessible Proana content that kids could watch. This app is meant for kids, it's filled with kids. Child abuse, yeah! Child abuse, yeah. This hurts my heart. This literally hurts my heart. I've seen TikToks that take a more positive view on BPD, for example. I've seen videos that make me feel a lot less alone and destigmatizing videos. Hope you understand it a little bit better with these two cups. The blue cup is someone without this disorder. The red cup is someone with this disorder. So notice that they have the same amount of water in them. The difference is society typically likes to say, we all have the same amount of tolerance for stress. We all have the same amount of emotional regulation. This is not true. People with borderline personality disorder start here every day. So, stress comes along to the blue. They're fine. They react, they don't have that much emotional response. But someone with BPD, has the same stress and it pushes them over the edge. But also, I've seen a stream of videos regarding mental illness that aren't positive, that aren't pro-recovery, they aren't the awareness drawing kind. They're more like the type of videos that can set you back to a mindset that you have spent years trying to destroy. Even if you're not fully aware that they will destroy your mental health, you see like 10 videos in a row about self-harm or even if your feed is filled with people crying, it feeds into that and your depression is addictive. People need to start talking about how addictive sadness can be. There was something so comforting about scrolling through Tumblr and finding depressed quotes and like lingering in that sadness because it's a long lasting emotion and it's what you've known. Almost comforting because it can be there for a long time. Sadness is an emotion that is inevitable and you can't avoid it. But when that's all you're seeing, it starts to become all you're feeling. And when all you're seeing is mental illness stuff, it consumes you and you're not your mental illness like that isn't the most interesting thing about you. you are a lot more than your mental illness you start to become your illness and be defined through your illness there's a lot more to life than bpd tiktok that's not to say it's not like all evil because that app is filled with a lot of creativity. I see a lot of great autism awareness content, things of that nature. I see a lot of good painting videos. There's a lot of wholesome things. There's so many good cat and dog videos and stuff, but obviously there's a community for everything. I feel like there's a fine line between help and hindrance when it comes to mental health on social media. It's ambiguous because one thing that triggers one person won't trigger the other. It might be a reminder that you're not alone and you're not 
not evil for having mental illness, but it could trigger you into relapsing, it could trigger you into old thought patterns, and due to the app's algorithm, it doesn't care what content that you see. So for example, I am in eating disorder recovery, so sometimes I like to see recovery content, and then my For You page starts to realise that's what I'm interested in. The app doesn't fucking care, because due to the algorithm, it could be relatable, comforting videos, but it also could be damaging content. That's the problem here. No one actually cares about our triggers. Kind of an important realisation on the app. This is why I think that this app isn't actually suitable for mentally ill people. Sometimes it's just outright toxic. I find when I delete the app, I feel a lot better. There's some good mental illness creators, which may be our list. Mental health professionals that I follow and recommend. If you have an eating disorder, why aren't you underweight? Well first, there's not just anorexia, there's bulimia, binge eating disorder, orthorexia, and more. And those don't cause you to lose weight? Nope, not always. Actually, only 6% of people with eating disorders are underweight. Why is that? Eating disorders are actually mental illnesses and have nothing to do with weight, so anyone of any body size can be affected by one. Living with quiet BPD. Appearing calm and collected to others, but falling apart behind closed doors. Avoiding conflict and instead lashing out on yourself in private. Being misdiagnosed and feeling invisible. I feel completely crushed right now. to delete everything i want to deactivate every social media i've ever had in my entire life i want every trace of me to be gone i don't want to be perceived i, I don't want to be perceived This is a really good question and something like this takes a lot of practice. I want to show you something. Da -da -da. This is a pack of cards which uses DBT skills and I got this the other day and it's really useful. And in this pack it has its own section for emotional regulation. Obviously, like, it feels good to be in a community and to feel not alone, but yeah, it can easily turn toxic. There's a lot of ignorance in that app. It shouldn't be for kids. We shouldn't be romanticising mental illness. We need to save the children. People are always trying to be the sickest. So yeah, sorry this video is a bit shit. I hope you've enjoyed and thank you so much for watching. Sending all my love. Bye bye!